my victory be yours today. Every citizen of Port Adelaide wish you the best of luck. Uh, I would like to uh, add my own personal best wishes to the success of this game today. And I would just like to say one thing before <laughs> Foster addresses you, and it is this. It's next door there, Brian Fazer has seen fit to announce his retirement before this game today. You can just imagine the reason for that. That's just for another little incentive for those folks in there to make it one for Brian Fazer. Well, now, I'd like to just tell you chappies that Boss Williams will not be retiring, but he will be playing next year. will be in charge. Yeah. I used to say Foster was the greatest leader by example uh, on and off the playing arena that I've ever been associated with, on and off the playing arena. Uh, he was totally uh, a totally committed person. Foss Williams is a bit like Ron Barass, he's lived his life as that person all the way through, on and off the field. Foss was the same. Well, I had some unbelievably deep conversations. I was privileged to spend some time with him. Mark got pretty close to Mark and pretty very close to Jenny and, uh, and had, that, had that time with him. Foss Williams was always a person that interested me because I, he reminded me of um, Tom Hafey. Super fit, really looked after himself as a coach. Uh, very similar sort of people from a distance. You know, if I looked and said, well, they're probably related to America. Stocky, strong, powerful legs, powerful body. And it must, um, it must teach a great attitude, you know. Foss Williams is what I've always read about and seen, Mark's father, and had a, a lot to do with him over a lot of time. An outstanding coach, an outstanding man. Never give up, never waste words. Hard bastard, really get in, hit hard. You know, the whole culture of Port Adelaide, most people would say Foss was the, uh, the man behind the modern Port Adelaide, you know, from the 50s onwards. As a family, of course, we lived in Quorn, and uh, that is our hometown, and uh, we all were very sporty-minded in there. I had, we had four, five brothers, and uh, we were all sporty-orientated, and Foss was very keen on sport himself, and uh, uh, always challenged everybody <laughs> around the place, and uh, from there, we, we just grew until we decided we'd got to the age where it was time to leave Quorn and come down to Adelaide. And he left there and uh, went up to Hawker for a while and uh, spent quite a bit of time in Hawker. Uh, that's where he met his wife, really, uh, Von Ganley. And uh, then uh, they uh, corresponded for quite a while and then he come back and then he come down to Adelaide. Well, I look at it and people say on the field, Dad was always really brave. And, you know, and I read every article that, you know, is in our house and it's always talking about the bravery of Dad. And as I explain it, it's probably the fact that when you're 19 and then you get put on a Corvette, which he was on, called the Kayama, and you have to mine sweep. He was on a minesweeper. So they went around to try and find the mines so that everyone else couldn't. So imagine doing that in the dark for five or six years Probably coming back and playing footy isn't that hard. You know, running into a pack isn't quite like looking for mines. We lived in a housing trust our home. Uh, my parents come from the country, they had no money. And, uh, you know, I can remember there was, you know, discussions about we don't have enough money to put the milk bottles out. You know, so uh, you have to understand that, uh, you know, we then went to Port Adelaide and saw a probably similar people that uh, just battled, battled away. When mum and dad first got married, they were, we lived at the Theberton post office, so underneath there, and that's the only place that they could afford and where I was born. And um, all I know is when we're talking about an economics degree, dad got that at the same time as he was coaching and working full time. So he wanted to go up into the post office. Uh, I look now, because in uh, the things outside, not only has he got writings for, uh, you know, what goes on in football, 
everyone in the post office got things. He evaluated the whole of Australia Post, how it could do better, how they could do better deliveries, what their percentages were. So I look, he took everything he learned. He did um, economics and the other thing he did was Malaysian because he thought it was good to learn a language as well. So dad honestly believed that the secret to success in sport was not only being courageous, but also having a brain that could think, is there a better way of doing it? And making sure that the people that he was with was looked after. So it all goes together, people and intelligence and courage. Well, Tap, congratulations for bringing the club up again to the, to the position it is today. It's been a long, hard trip. I mean, people think you've, we've had a pretty easy season. It's not easy to win 17 games out of 18. It means that everybody's doing their job practically all the time. They're thinking of one thing as their football. Now this game today capitalises on the other 17. The other 17, unless we can make this one a certainty, don't mean a thing. Now just running through the club that we're going to meet today, we met them a fortnight ago and they were just rubbish. We can make them the same way today. Why everybody with the same idea as they had a fortnight ago. We got a bad start last time. We got a bad start and still won. We don't want any bad start today, and we don't want if we get a good start anyone loafing on the job. But Foster uh, was uh, such a fanatical person that it had to rub off on you uh, what he had to offer, his commitment. No one else uh, was more important to him in his lifetime than the uh, Port Adelaide Football Club. He was tough, but you do anything for him. You know, we, the coaches we had, like, uh, Motley we'd run for, Foster we'd run for, do anything for Foster. I used to cut his lawns to get a game. Now, Tap, it's no good thinking about it later. The game's an even fever one so far. It means that you've got to stick everything into it. Perhaps your legs are not running on like you'd like them to. Well, then you just forget your legs. Just think of your gut and your heart for a little while. Just thinking that they can drive you on, they can lift your legs, they can drive it. Just think that you've got to do it. You've got to go faster, you've got to go harder, you've got to get in there, you've got to catch a man. And those silly marks, good solid football, long kicking, see if we can get it out towards the centre of the ground going down this way. And you'll notice that the either end can be scored from. Now we want to score this quarter, score big, and we want to score in the last quarter. Now come on, lift yourself up. Being out on the ground, uh, listening to Dad uh, talk at quarter time and and three quarter time, it was we'd uh, we'd dress up in um, you know the full kit. I'd have number one on the back or number fourteen at the start with uh, John Cale. He was my uh, hero. Uh, socks right up, uh, boots would be polished, and you know wear the whole full kit and uh, get out there and listen as soon as you could. The only thing he was in his coaching career, he, the only thing he wanted to do was win. Being Second, losing, was not part of his life. And there goes the final siren, and it's Port Adelaide again for the fifth successive year, creating an Australian record, a South Australian and an Australian record. Listen to that crowd go mad. Here, every one of our players today did a terrific job. You people, I know that are sitting around here, have all come to the, the dinner tonight with the, the satisfaction that it's been quite good that you're uh, associated in some manner or other with the Port Adelaide Football Club. As a footballer, he just was built so he could attack the ball against anybody. And his attack on the football was always part of his life. Nothing else, but football was always his main objective. And it didn't matter where he was, what he was doing, he kept his eyes on the game and attack the ball all the time. We were out there training one night and Foss said, we're not aggressive enough. We're not, we're not, you know, we're losing our aggression. We've got to get more aggression. Tonight we're going to train like we're aggressive. Tackle and all, everything, in. And it was a wet night and the pitch out here used to be mud, you know, it was good. So, and we started training and he says, not bloody hard enough. Got to get into each other. And he was tackling too, Foster. Whatever we did, he did. 
And anyway, he grabbed the ball, turned, and started to run, and Graham Cooper hit him dead centre. Oh, I thought, he's bloody killed him. And down he went, and he got up, and he's bleeding from the eye, and he said, that's what I want. One night we were playing, grand final, we were playing Norths, I think it was, and I went to bed about nine o'clock. I heard the phone ring, and my wife came up and said, Foss is on the phone. And I thought, oh, hello. bloody someone's injured. What's going on? So I went down and I said, yes, Foss, how are you? He said, good. He said, now, tomorrow, the ruck is important. So, you know, you've got to give it all you've got. And worry about those blokes. Worry about Linda. Anyway, worry about them. And he said, and don't get up to ask the phone again. <laughs> he's bloody mongrel he was. <laughs> don't get up to ask the phone again. I said, you rang me. He said, doesn't matter. <laughs> the, year, the year that he retired uh, was a sad thing for Port Adelaide as such, but nevertheless, I coached for the next two, three years after that. Then Foster came back and uh, they gave me the flick and uh, brought Foster in. I couldn't argue about that because his creditability was way far in front of what I had to offer. and So I went on and continued playing with Port Adelaide as such. Any new player that came to the club, we would give them the creed to read. The creed had some substance with it. The creed had uh, everything that was what Port Adelaide was, was all about. And, uh, and he, he did say there was, uh, was honour in defeat but uh, only honour in defeat when uh, human endeavour by each and, individual, each and every individual player was completely exhausted. And that was exactly as we played. Foster groomed us more than any other club, which they used to get upset in the old younger days when Foster was coaching us. I suppose we won a lot of games in the last few minutes of the game, but we were trained from Foster's perspective that uh, we were trained to play five quarters. So we would play every game out to the last second. On the other end of the cricket pitch, this kick is a high one, comes into centre half forward of absolute massive players. As Mead breaks clear, is tackled by Schmidt, comes down and a free kick has been given three seconds to, to Port Adelaide with three seconds to go. Well, they're either going to win it by five points or it's going out of bounds. There's one point the difference, 107 to South, 106 to Port Adelaide. And here's the player, Mead, to take his kick. He's 55 to 60 yards out. I don't think he can get the distance. Uh, he also had res huge respect for the opposition. You know, like people will go, oh, we're Port Adelaide people, and I'll go, if I saw Jimmy Dean, I would know Jimmy Dean, the Gallagher family. You know, like we, we grew up knowing, wow, to be the best, you want to beat the best, and you go really hard on the field, but they've got great other champions in other clubs have the same hearts too. So we were always brought up to um, uh, value your opposition, uh, play hard against them, but never, ever be nasty.